What's up, my duders? <laughs> What's going on? It's time for a podcast. Kelsey was going to do the intro, but she chickened out. She's got to be like, hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> it's not my channel. I guess it kind of is. Today I'm doing a get ready with me slash what I eat in a day slash wish haul. Yeah. Know. <laughs> Hi, everybody. What's up, duders? This is podcast time. You know? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> we did like 30 episodes. I have no clue how to really intro the show. Oh, She's yeah. Like, it's episode 30. And so, I see people in the comments sometimes say that we skipped one, but we did record that one. I just was in like a bad mood that day so mm-hmm. I didn't want to put it out so yeah the 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 numbering is off a little bit but um there yeah it's there there was a podcast but I guess we just didn't put it up or something or yeah. you guys don't want to hear it I was like very low energy and the yeah unlike normally when you're yeah. so bombastic and, yeah, and so happy with life so this is the <laughs> doing the devil's tango podcast. What what is it? What what's it about? Um, loosely, it's a relationship advice podcast, but we can cover any number of topics, such as home decor, <laughs> uh, personal five. style, video games, manga, <laughs> etc. Literally, whatever we feel like. I yeah. mean, I guess, or it's based around relationship advice, relationship discussions, mm-hmm. if you will, but. Yeah, I guess we just talk about whatever. Whatever we feel like talking whatever. about. Whatever. It's it's tangent, the podcast. So, Alex, how are you doing? I am doing okay, I guess. Um, starting working on the new video, doing Teen Beach 2, which will probably be out by the time this podcast goes up, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, working on that. And then we found out that you, Kelsey, have high cholesterol. So don't tell them that. So now, now we're starting a diet. This is like old people problems. If you're like seventeen, just don't even <laughs> listen to this. Just cover your ears. <laughs> It'll be you one day. It'll <laughs> happen to you. Um, yeah. So now we're starting a no fried food, uh, no red meat diet, right? Fish and vegetables boiled in water and tears. No, not ew. <laughs> boiled in water, fish. It's weird because I'm like pretty thin and I think I eat pretty healthily for the most part. I don't. I'd say more often than not, yeah. I don't eat a ton of junk or anything, but yeah, my cholesterol is like a few points over normal. So I have to start exercising more and eating more healthily. So that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like eating healthy is like hip now, it's like cool. True. Like being vegan and like gluten free and this like it's like it's like cool now. Everyone's like kind of like trying to do that or or whatever. So I don't know. It's not that weird. We're just we're just hip with the kids now. Healthy food can still be good. Yeah, I mean the, you know the 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 cheat code right of it's like any kind of vegetable you cut them up, salt and pepper, put it in the oven for about what twenty minutes at four twenty five, <laughs> and then it comes out tasting amazing. What about? video games what video games are we playing what are we playing well you're playing witcher for like the fifth time witcher three witcher three sorry witcher three uh the wild hunt for the third time oh okay only third time only the third time um i guess there's new dlc coming out for it yeah right so people should be going back into oh yeah so you're playing that and then i'm I'm uh, going through, this is a real deep cut. I'm going through, there's a series of games that like no one has ever played called Saga. It's like a Square Enix thing. Um, they came out, they're contemporary with Final Fantasy, but like no one ever talks about them. And I just, I was like, well, Kaos is going to be playing Witcher for the next 12 years. So <laughs> I was like, I need something that's going to like take my time too. And so I decided I'm going to play all of the Saga games, which I know none of you know, because you all have lives and have hobbies that aren't as nerdy as ours. Um <laughs> But it's so like Saga in in America they were called Final Fantasy Legend. So it's Final Fantasy Legend one, two, and three on the Game Boy, and then there's a whole bunch of other games that go on. And I decided I've always wanted to sit down and play all those games because you know I I was a Final Fantasy kid. Um, that's how cool I was, but never uh, never got around to those games. So I figured you know why not? So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So in the time that I've been playing Witcher. I don't know how long I've been playing it exactly. Alex Probably. has gone through three games already. You've gone through three of them already, yeah. <laughs> just to just let you know how, how long Witcher is. It's a really good game. 
If you like boobies and butts, this is a good game. And handsome, silver-haired men. Just one. Witcher 3 is funny because, like, I don't know, like, you can tell the game... Well, I don't know. I guess it seems like the game was probably mostly made by men, I guess, just because, like, like all the girls are, like, so, like, perfect-looking, pristine, you know, perfect hourglass, very sexy, and then all the men just look like you hit random on the Skyrim <laughs> character creator. Like, every dude looks like... I don't know, man. It looks like they got dropped on their head a couple times as a baby. You know what I'm saying? And all the girls are just like these super sexy, gorgeous elves, you know, with the boobies hanging out. And then every, <laughs> every guy's just like, you are, you know, I'm being cold blood. You know, it's so weird. And then, and then, of course, Geralt's all just like, oh, my God. No, these tracks look like a deer ran through here. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Triss. Oh, I, I love you. Oh. <laughs> It just sounds like he permanently woke up five minutes ago, you know? Anyway, dating, is it? That's how you want me to talk? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so moving on to the first email. <laughs> so moving on here. Okay. To the reason people listen. Is it? I don't know why people listen. Um, it's called My Unfortunate and Infuriating Love Life. And then there's like a, one of like the sideways, the like slash mouth where it's like... Rah. Slanty face. The slanty mouth face, yeah. yeah. Colon forward slash, I think it is. It says, Haya, Kelsey and Alex. Or, Haya, Kelsey and Alex. I don't know. Maybe she's doing karate. <laughs> I'm 20 years old. I'm a 20-year-old student who's perfectly comfortable being single. All right. Email's over. Perfect. There right. we go. Pack it up. Problem solved. <laughs> but if the right person came along, I would happily date them. I mean, that's a very obvious statement if you think about it. But Well. Yeah. So, she's comfortable being single. But, hey. If Geralt of Rivia showed up, I wouldn't say no. You know what I'm saying? Girl. You get it? (laughs) (laughs) But when it comes to relationships, both in the past and future... Oh, she's a time traveler. Cool. (laughs) I tend to run into quite a few issues. Some I can't control. I suffer from... Hapophobia? Wait, let me see. Hapophobia? Hapibophobia? Hapibophobia? Hapophobia. Hapophobia. It's an anxiety disorder that, in short, makes me uncomfortable when I'm touched in any way without prior knowledge or permission or being in large crowded sp- places with lots of people. Okay, so so being touched, like, unannounced is something that freaks her out. like being in crowds. In crowded places. Mm-hmm. Um, which, while I'm perfectly fine with as I've sought therapy and can control it to some extent... Comma, it tends to turn people off. Also, being bi makes it harder somehow to find a relationship, as many tend to be internally biphobic or restrict me from having friends because, in their words, I could be attracted to anyone. Hmm. Hmm. Let's, let's put a pin in that one. We'll come back to it. Okay. Um, there are quite a few barriers that make it harder for people to date me, as I can be perceived as having a lot of baggage and being too much work, quote unquote. Uh, What are your guys' advice for mentioning my problems in a way that doesn't scare any potential partners off? And also, how do I create my boundaries without being too selfish? I'm not expecting a forever partner, though I would like to find one in the future and hope this advice will help me. Thank you for reading. Easy. Okay. Okay. So there's like two main things going on here, There's a few things. There's a few. But the the, the two main things I pulled out here is that A, right, she has this... She has this anxiety about being, like, touched in an unannounced way. Mm-hmm. Um, she has some mental health. Yeah, some sort of, like, mental health anxiety about, like, being touched in, in certain ways. And then the other one is is her being bi, which she thinks makes it harder to find a relationship. And thus, those two things combined, she perceives as having too much baggage, baggage. for okay. a lot of people. Right. So... Now, now, the whole thing about, like, you know, you have this anxiety and you get kind of freaked out when you're sort of, like, touched in an unexpected way. Like, I can see how that would lead to problems in a relationship just because, like, you know, a a lot of girls like spontaneity and things, right? And so a lot of guys like to do things that are spontaneous, like, you know, suddenly kiss you or, like, suddenly hold your hand or, like, you know, come up behind you and give you a hug, that type of thing. But this would freak this girl out, apparently, right? Mm -hmm. This, like, not having outward or, like, not having explicit permission and not, like, knowing that someone's going to touch you, that can sort of freak her out. And so trying to, like, date someone who wants to be all, like, cute and spontaneous and surprise you, whatever, 
you know, actually would end up freaking this girl out. I think that's how that works, right? Yeah, I mean, we don't know um, to what... I guess she states pretty explicitly without any prior knowledge. Right. So, so coming up behind you, giving you a hug, you know, squeezing your butt or like that type of like cutesy couple stuff. Apparently, uh, based on what she wrote and what this easy girl was, she, she wasn't liking that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so whoever she dates would have to like, you know, send like a carrier pigeon and be like, may I approach the bench or whatever. No, I'm just kidding. But like, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like you would have to like be – the person would kind of – they would kind of ha- – it sounds like they'd have to, like, walk on eggshells a little bit where it's, like, makes her, like, can I hold your hand? Is that okay? Can I do whatever? That's okay. Which at the beginning of a relationship is kind of normal, I guess. But, like, to have to do that continuously, I can see how she thinks that that would probably end up wearing someone down to where they wouldn't want to, like, have to always be concerned about that stuff. Right? Yeah. That's that's her concern. Mm-hmm. So how how do you think that – you know, that should be handled. I have no idea. Because, like, that's, I mean, that seems like, I don't know, it's like whoever this girl dates would kind of have to, like, rethink how, like, any type of physicality in a relationship would, would be done, you know? hmm Because, like, like, I don't know, there's just, like, things that, like, as a couple, like, that you just wouldn't really be able to, to do, like, cutesy couple stuff, right? Well, yeah, but maybe, like, so she's not okay with being touched spontaneously or without forewarning or whatever, but maybe she could go up to her partner and, like, give them Mm. hugs sometimes, like, when she feels comfortable or kiss them or whatever. It doesn't mean that it has to go, like, both ways. True, true, yeah. I guess her having this issue about things done to her means that, like, yeah, she would need to, like... uh, Make it, like, overtly obvious when she's cool with stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, like, hey, I'm in a kissy mood now, and she, needs, she she would need to kind of make that known. Yeah. Right? Or, yeah, like, if she wants to have sex or if she wants to make out, she wants to, whatever it is, hold hands, whatever it is. Like, like yeah, she, I feel like, you, Izzy, like, you would probably need to like take, the initiative. take the initiative most of the time because, like, you know, it, like, if I was dating someone like that, I I would I would feel very uncomfortable trying to do like anything, um, which is you know because you have this issue that I'm trying to respect, and so it's like I I, w- I would need you to or the other person to like make it obvious to me like really obvious <laughs> when it's cool to like do things or or to touch or not touch or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean like getting consent from your partner to like have sex or whatever is always a good thing. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, but I just mean like, yeah, you know, like sometimes it's very unsexy to just be like, "Hello, would you like to have intercourse now?" You know, what I mean, like the sometimes, like that's that's. <laughs> well, you I mean, can say it in a well, different yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, I'm just being, I'm being exaggerated, but I mean, like you know, that's kind of what I was saying, like cutesy couple stuff, where like you kind of be spontaneous, and you're just like, "Oh, hey, guess what? I'm horny." <laughs> <laughs> that's how we do it by the way yeah. um, I am horny um, but uh, but you know what I mean so like like that would have to be re- you have to like rethink all of that to be like okay when, when you're in the mood you let me know and then we can whatever whatever just because like to be safe right because like you don't want to because obviously freaking them out and giving them an anxiety attack would certainly kill the mood for a while I'm sure yeah but I mean the the person she's dating should still be like can I hold your hand can mm-hmm. I kiss you or whatever like I think that's kind of cute yeah at first but I feel like in a long term relationship like the, the person would need to be pretty understanding to like because they'd have to keep doing that well yeah but there's there's someone out there for everyone. Oh sure, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound discouraging here. I, I'm just trying to like put myself in the in the frame of mind of someone who's dating someone like this, and then be like, like, what would I need to do, or what would be my concerns, or whatever, whatever. Yeah, there's definitely some. I mean, there's someone for everyone. There's someone who will absolutely respect this about you. Um, you know, I mean, it kind of goes both ways. Like she said, she's in therapy for this anxiety, which is good, right? Because mm-hmm. obviously, this is something that would be probably good for you to kind of work on and overcome. It seems like you're already doing that, so good for you. But then also you need to date someone who is understanding of what you're going through and who can sort of respect your boundaries and be willing to work with you on what you're cool with and not cool with or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. 
But there are people like that out there. Oh, for sure. So don't feel discouraged. You just have to find the right one. You just got to find the right one, man. You know, it'll just fall out of the sky. Well, now you're 20, right? She's 20. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you still got a long time to to wait. Um, You know, you said you're comfortable being single. And like maybe maybe a lot of young people think that's why I certainly thought this way, right? Where it's like you're 20 years old and it's like, I should be dating people. I shouldn't be single now. I'm in the prime of my life. But like, it doesn't really work that way. Like being single now when you're 20 and working on whatever these issues are that you have is like, that's an investment. That's like a time investment that's going to pay a lot in the future rather than like you kind of bumbling through your 20s, going from relationship to relationship to relationship, feeling like garbage because people are like, well, you're so weird. And then later on working on it and then feeling like you wasted your time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you worked on it now, then in the future, it's like, oh, like yeah, I had this problem and then I worked on it and now everything's a lot better now. You know, So I think what you're doing right now is a, a good choice to work on yourself rather than like trying to just bounce from guy to guy to guy to guy to guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And girl. She's oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Sorry. Person to person to person to person to person. Now, this brings us to the other topic that I can't speak to at all, but Kelsey can, which is, uh, what was it? She says, like, I'm bi and therefore people think that I'll just sleep with anyone or something like that. Yeah, she says being bi makes it harder to find a relationship as many tend to be internally biphobic or restrict me from having friends because in their words, I could be attracted to anyone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I've definitely had personal experience with. Hmm. Um, you want to talk about that? Well, or? just like when I was, it stopped being as much of a thing, I think, as I got older and the people I dated got older, but especially when I was younger, like around your age, guys I dated would get jealous about me being bi and they would think that I would like try to make a move on my female friends and stuff and they didn't want me to have female friends or they like fetishized it fetish fetishized it fetishized it (laughs) (laughs) and like wanted to have a threesome with me and like another girl didn't you tell me that like every guy you've ever dated has kind of like assumed you'd be cool with a threesome or specifically asked you for a threesome because you're bi yeah like you (laughs) you it's like which I, I like i understand the logic it's dumb it's stupid but like the thing is like wait you're in the girls i'm in the girls what if we both have sex with a girl yeah you know cuz you're bi so obviously you're just like super horny all the time yeah, and you you'd, and you'd have sex with anyone life. obviously right <laughs> yeah. literally anyone you have no standards whatsoever <laughs> um which, like, if you do that in your relationship and you're bi or whatever and you sleep with other people, that's totally fine. Like, you do yeah, too, But yeah, it's just yeah. not something that I would do. Like, there's nothing wrong with having a threesome, but it's it's the idea of, like, assuming that you must be cool with this certain thing because you are bi is kind of, like, a a bit overreaching. Yeah. You know? And, like, well, that, that's always something that was funny, like, when if, like, someone had... So I, I had a couple gay guy friends um, back in Japan... And something that one of them told me the story that was really funny, where it's like he was saying how he he you know, he came out to his like friends, and then his friends were like worried that like oh so like so you're like into me then you look a crush on me and the guy's like, like no yeah the, the guy's like I, like I'm into like guys who were like good Hot. look good looking yeah I'm not into <laughs> you like <laughs> yeah but, like it's like people assume that like no one has any standards at yeah. all so some like, like anyone who's like LGBT like has like no standards at all where it's like. It's like, oh, like you're into guys, so you just like you sleep with any guy, or yeah. You know, but like, it's it's really weird to assume because like you know a straight guy wouldn't sleep with any girl. I mean, well, some of them would, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone's different. Some people would sleep with whoever they can. Some people are very selective. Like being a member of the LGBT community does not change that. Effect. Yeah, I mean, think of like like think of how picky a straight girl is. And, like, why would you assume that a bi girl would not be equally as picky? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or not. Or, or, or not so. Yeah. I mean, it was, I'm just saying, you know, it's like like a lot of guys, right, complain, like like the guys who can't get a girl or whatever like that, they're always like, oh, girls are so, like, high standard and so picky. Like, why don't they give me a chance? And then, but then if there's, like, a bi girl and it's like, oh, you, you, you probably want to sleep with all your girlfriends, don't you? It's like, as if, as if the girl would not have any standards or any kind of, like, type at all. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, some people, you know, live their lives however they want. But but yeah, it is it is a bit strange to think that it's like, oh, you obviously want to. 
Because, like, um, well, for example, like, you know, girls, girls are really good at putting people in the friend zone, typically, right? A lot of them. Some of them, yeah. I mean, like, like you know, good, I mean, like, like... A lot of guys, we've talked about this on the podcast before, like, you know, a lot of guys or like, you know, straight guys or guys who are into girls, whatever, you know, like a lot of them, it's like, like, if there's a girl who has guy friends, most of those guy friends definitely want to sleep with that girl on some level. Uh, Whereas girls are typically good at like putting people in the friend zone. And so it's funny that guys would assume that like, because every guy knows that girls do that to guys, but it's, it's weird that they would assume that like a bi girl wouldn't do that to other girls. You know, yeah. like, like, oh, you're my friend. I'm not going to sleep with you because you're my friend. I'm not attracted to you. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. girls do that with guys all the time. So it's like, why wouldn't they do that with girls too? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the, the issue of, like, coming across people who are biphobic or who are worried about you being friends with girls because you, you obviously want to sleep with them. Like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's just an age thing because she's 20. So I assume she's dating people who are around her own age. Yeah. 18, 19, 20, 21. So it's like, as people, like you said, as people get older, they kind of grow out of these weird, well, they sometimes. Hopefully. Hopefully grow out of these, like, kind of weird, like, teenage ways of thinking. Yeah. And also you could just, like, see people who think like that, people who are um, biphobic, homophobic, whatever, and jealous, controlling like that. It's just like a litmus test of people that you don't want to be with. Like, if you start casually dating someone and they have those views or opinions, then you just know, like, okay, this is not someone that I want to associate myself with. Yeah, I feel like whenever people... I mean, rejection rejection sucks for anyone, for sure. But, like, you know, yeah, if you, if you meet someone who thinks this about you because you're bi or you meet someone who, who thinks you're crazy or whatever because you have this anxiety issue... It's like, like people tend to like think that it's like, oh, like, you know, somehow I'm the problem and like they're totally normal and like I'm the one who's wrong. But like if someone's just not into you, that's a that's a them thing, not really a you thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But a lot of people tend to put on themselves. It's kind of like it's kind of like when you're like an influencer, like YouTube, YouTube or whatever. And then there's people who like write hate comments. And like a lot of people, you know, it's kind of like, why don't you like me? Like, what's wrong with me? How come this random commenter doesn't like me or whatever? But it's like. It's, it has nothing to do with, like, the YouTuber. It's just, like, the person doesn't like the thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, like, people take it so personally. Like, like I need to have everyone like me, you know? But, like, like you're saying, it's, like, if people aren't into you because of you being bi or they're into you because of your anxiety issue or whatever, it's, like, that's a them thing, not really a you thing. Yeah. What are your guys' advice for mentioning my problems in a way that doesn't scare potential partners off? Um, I don't... Well, when I started dating Alex, pretty soon after we started dating, I was, like, very upfront with all of my issues and baggage, (laughs) probably to a fault, because I'm just a very... I have quite a bit of it, so I just want to, like, get it all out there, just, just so the person knows, like, what they're getting into. Just just pulled out her Santa Claus sack. Just, yeah. Where do like, I see? Do where where do I start? All right. <laughs> Because, like, I have mental health issues and stuff, and I'm, like, a former drug addict, which a lot of people are not cool with dating someone like that, which I totally understand. So I just want to get out, like, all of my baggage, quote-unquote, which everyone has to varying degrees. Everyone has different amounts of baggage. Some (laughs) people have more than others, yeah. I mean, I I have a debilitating uh, Sailor Moon addiction, so... (laughs) Um, So I don't really have advice for how you can tactfully do that because I just kind of put it all out there. And either the person is okay with it or they're not. Yeah, but again, I think, like, I think that's kind of how you have to do it to a certain extent. I mean, for, for like, I don't know. It's it's kind of like, like... If it's something that's kind of not a big deal or kind of just whatever, like, for example, on the first date, you don't just come out and be like, here's all my kinks, you know, like, you don't just, unless <laughs> well, unless that's that kind of date. But, you know what I'm saying, usually you don't just drop it all out there because that's something that it's not super important in the grand scheme of things. But if it's something like, like this, where it's like, you know, um, I have this anxiety issue about being touched, whatever, whatever, whatever. I, I feel like that's something you should just kind of come out and say. Mm. Um, even like... Like, even before the first date, 
whenever I don't, I don't know how you're meeting guys is he like whether you, you meet them you're at the barnes and noble eating cheesecake or or you're on tinder or whatever it is right like i think like that's something you, sh- you should kind of just get out there mm-hmm. you know it, it, you know they ask you on a date and they're like hey let's go whatever and then i feel like that's something you should just be like hey so just a heads up like not a huge deal but like i have this but explain it and then if they're like that's like weird man bye then you saved yourself getting all dressed up, going out to macaroni grill or whatever it is you're doing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like it can save you time and save you, you know, makeup and save you all kinds of whatever it is you do. Um, it can save you this stuff by just telling them in advance of, you know, like, don't touch me uh, without telling me or, you know, don't, don't do a little surprise shoulder rub or don't whatever, whatever, you know, things like that. You just like come out and say it. And then if they're understanding enough to be like, okay, cool, anyway, see you there, then it's like, okay, maybe they're not so bad. Mm-hmm. The, the question is like, how do I tell people? Like, just just tell them, you know? Like, tell them in the same way you tell them as if you were, like, missing an arm or something. Just be very forward with it. Yeah, I mean, because if you don't mention the hapophobia hap- mm-hmm. from the beginning, then people might start to make advances on you that you're not comfortable with. Like, try to put their arm around you or hug you or hold your hand or whatever. Right, and then it's super awkward for everyone. Yeah. Because it's like, they didn't know, so they're not in the wrong, but they're going to feel really guilty. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to obviously feel, you know, freaked out because that's how you are. And then also you're going to feel guilty for not telling them and you're going to be like, I should have just told you, but I didn't. And then it's just going to make everyone feel super guilty and awkward. So, like I said, right at the beginning, even before the date, is even planned. I think you should say, you should tell them. Any potential uh, suitor, quarter, if you will, um, any potential guy or girl or whoever it is you're going to go on a date with, like, just, like, tell them. As for the sexuality thing, um, maybe you don't have to be quite as upfront with that as you would with the other thing. I mean, it's totally up to you. You can tell that person, like, right away before you even meet or you can, like, have it in your dating profile or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or you could wait until you're more, not, like, exclusive, well, if you want, or just, like, more serious. You've gone on several dates. Um, it's really whatever you're comfortable with, I think. I mean, obviously, if you're dating a woman, they're going to know that you're... <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll figure it out soon enough. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, that's... I guess it's better to be upfront with that. As soon as possible, I guess. But I don't know. Yeah, it's tricky. I think I told you pretty early. Not the first date, though. No, I believe it was after the first date. Um, Because, well, you were talking about some music singer group thing. Like some, like, Japanese singer Oh, Caro Caro Benito. Yeah, yeah. you you and and you were you were saying how you thought she was like so hot or whatever. <laughs> so I, so I kind of pieced it together. I was like oh, maybe, but like I don't I like I feel like well as a as a straight white male, my opinion on this means nothing. But um, like I don't know. I feel like that's something that isn't really that important mm. to anyone else but you. I, I mean, like like I'm not saying you should keep it a secret. I'm just saying it's like like. You know, having this, like, mental anxiety issue is a thing that definitely affects the person you're dating. But, like, the fact that you are attracted to men and women and whatever in between, whatever it is, you know, your sexuality is, like, you know, the person you're dating, you're dating them because you like them. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I guess. what if that person, what if she's dating a man and they're homophobic or something? Oh, true, true, yeah. Biphobic. I guess. Some kind of phobic, right? Yeah. Um, I guess that's true. Like I said, I'm not saying you should keep it a secret. I'm just saying it's like... But, yeah, no, I guess... I guess... Um, hmm. Yeah, it's tricky. It is tricky just because I, you know, I feel like... Like like you being bi really has very little effect on our relationship. Like, really. Yeah. You know? I mean, I guess when you're playing Witcher and you're like, oh, that elf girl's hot. Or like, that's, that, that's about <laughs> the extent of it, really. Like, it doesn't really... You know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't know. Like, it just, because, like, you're dating me because you're into me, I assume. And so. Yeah. 
A little bit. Maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so it's kind of like in the grand scale. But, you know, yeah, not everyone is as open minded. Although I guess I don't know if someone's if someone's totally cool and understanding about her anxiety issue. I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with them being pretty open minded in general. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, I just want to. Re- I'm not saying you should keep your sexuality a secret. I'm just saying it's like no, me either. Like, like you don't necessarily have to like come out with like a big thing. And be like, oh, I'm bi, you know, because it's like, like, I don't know. Like, maybe it's just because the way I think. But it's like if if you'd come out on the first day and been like, hello, Alex, I am bisexual, I'd have been like, okay, that's a weird <laughs> thing to just come out and say, but fine, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do understand that people get weirded out about like. You being friends with other girls or whatever, because you're, you're you're trying to see their boobs, but like, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's up to you. You want to come out and tell them, and then just be like, hope you're cool with that. I mean, obviously, at some point, you should tell them. Yeah, because I mean, you know, as you get to know someone, as you date them long term, like you should just know things about them. You yeah. know, like even if it's you know, like what's their favorite color and their favorite food, and like are they bisexual? What's their favorite you don't movie? Wanna, like, it's kind of just feel like you have to hide part of yourself. Right. Right. True. So, yeah, there's. I mean, there's no like one size fits all answer for this, but, um, I, I guess just keep in mind that like, if people aren't into you because of different attributes that you have that's not that's not a you problem that's like a them problem like they don't like like they don't want this thing and that doesn't mean that that what you have doesn't mean like what you're offering is a bad thing it just means that that person didn't want it so find someone who wants it you know what i'm saying yeah if i can get someone to date me then anyone can yeah (laughs) okay next email thanks for writing good luck you want to read this one? Sure. What's the, what's the title? It's called Small Number Problems. Hmm. Small Number Problems. Can, can is, you is, guess? Is that what, what we're calling it nowadays? <laughs> like a small peepee. <laughs> <laughs> small peepee? What, are you five years old? <laughs> a small peener? <laughs> a small weenie? <clears throat> All right. S- small number. I assume this is, we're talking about, oh, what's, what's the term people say? Body count? Yeah. How many people you've murdered? Like, like, like Hitman? Yeah. I've only murdered seven people in my life. (laughs) Anyway, go on. Hello, Alex and Kelsey. Hello. Love the podcast. Thank you. My fiancé, male 23, and I, 19 female. What? (laughs) We're at record scratch, music stops. Excuse me? Leave them alone. They can do it. Okay, okay. Live your life. Live your life. Have been together for over two and a half years, plus we were friends before that. I met him when I was 17, and marriage was most certainly not on my horizon, nor his at age 21. Right. Hold on. So. They might not be from here. They met. <laughs> she's 17. He's 21. They've been dating for two and a half years. So they dated when she was 17 and he was 21. Because now she's 19. Yeah, she says we were friends before we dated, but then she says she met when she was 17. And now she's 19, so... So they dated for two and a half years, but you met two years ago, and you were friends before you dated. Before you met. Are you guys time travelers? <laughs> Maybe she met, met like, romantically or whatever. I don't know. Maybe. I mean... At any rate. I, it's too late now. I'm just saying, though, a 21-year-old dating a 17-year-old, that's that that's a conversation. Lots of places it's more normal than it would be here. I think. Well, I, I think I feel like it's actually quite normal in the U.S. too. It's just that like the online discourse about it is very like against it. But like, well, you, I mean, you know, when you were in high school, there was definitely girls who were like fifteen, sixteen, dating like twenty-year-olds. Yes. You know, well, when, when I say normal, I don't mean it's like it's like okay. good. I just mean like it happens more often than people probably think. Yeah, or there'd be like a fourteen-year-old freshman dating an eighteen-year-old senior. senior or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or I, mean, I knew girls who were, like, in, like, eighth grade who were dating, like, college guys and stuff. I had a friend when I was 12 or 13 who was dating a, like, a 25-year-old man. When she was, like, 12? Yeah, or something like that, yeah. That's, like, that. That's like the part of the Japanese manga store that you don't go to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. I yeah. even knew then it was bad, but she thought it was really cool. Yeah, because, like, like, back then you think it's so cool. 
right? It's like like all oh, this girl's fifteen and she's like, yo, my boyfriend's like in college. Like that's so cool. I'm going to college party. Anyway, we're okay. digressing from you. Okay, email. I'm okay. sorry. Alex I, I, keeps derailing. I'm me. sorry. I'm not trying to judge you. I'm just saying. Whatever. Okay. So you're 17, he's 21, and then you, you started dating and now you're getting married. Cool. Good for you. We fell in love and can't really see life apart. We're getting married next year after I turned 21 because I told him I want at least one year out of school. I graduated this past May with my bachelor's to live life as an unmarried woman. She graduated with a bachelor's at 19? I mean, people can no, skip no, no, grades. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not saying she's lying. I'm saying like, like this, this story is just going places. Yeah, this girl's like a like a Mozart prodigy here. <laughs> anyway, let's go on. Okay, no more interruptions. I cannot guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> um, prior to us dating, I had only had one boyfriend and a sort of boyfriend in high school. However, my fiancé had a serious relationship with a girl before me, which ended really poorly. Mm. I always felt really insecure about this relationship due to a couple of things, which I won't bore you with now. I wish you would have. Yeah, that, that would make things make more sense, but okay. Uh, however, one of the big reasons that the relationship bothered me is that he and his ex had sex while they were dating, and I never slept with my previous boyfriend or any other guy. I'm super excited to get married to him because I love him, but this fact always bothers me, sometimes even when we're intimate. Sometimes I don't mind it as much, and other times something small happens that triggers my anxiety again. Today I filled out a form for the doctors, and it asked me how many sexual partners I've had. I got the sinking feeling that I will always answer it with one, while he will always answer it with two. Both are incredibly small numbers, but it bothers me that I've never had sex with anyone else, and he has. If we both had slept with one other person, or neither of us had, it would probably feel better, but now it just feels like this off-balance... That makes me really depressed. I've talked with him about this before, and he's always ready to listen. He loves me and knows he feels, and I know he feels almost guilty that there's this difference that bothers me so much. Is there anything that can be done to help me with this? Best Ingrid, you can use my name if you want. So her concern, let's just summarize, there's a lot of information there. I was interrupting because that's what I do. Um, Just ruin things. No, but uh, so, so her fiance has slept with two women that she knows of and then she's Don't say that <laughs> so she slept with two women his ex and then her and she's only been she's with him. only been with him she never slept with any of her previous boyfriends for whatever reason okay and her concern is that that bothers her so like i've been in this position before where i've been with people who have been with more people than i have mm. and it made me feel insecure to uncomfortable so i understand your feelings about this um i feel like everyone's kind of been in that situation almost everyone yeah because i mean you know like like i guess i've i've felt that same way before i'm sure like I've, a lot of people have probably felt that way before um especially as you kind of get older like you know i'm i'm in my 30s now and you're in your late 20s and it's kind of like around that age most people who are not married have been with a pretty significant number of people. Yeah. I mean, everyone's different, obviously. Sure, yeah. But... I'm, not, I'm not saying everyone's, like, hoeing it up or whatever. I just mean, <laughs> like, I feel like, you know, like, as you get older, it's like, like, of course people have been with lots of people because you're, like, 30, you know? Like, yeah. you've been you've been dating and or having sex since, let's say, 18, for example. So, say 12 years. <laughs> it's like, you've probably got at least a handful of people, if not two. Yeah. So it's it kind of gets, but yeah. What when you're when you're that age, I understand how it's like one and two, one person, two people is kind of like a big deal because you're still kind of fresh in that world of sex. Yeah, but know? it's not like he's been with like fifty people. So, but like I understand your feelings, but at least there's not more of a disparity in the number. But yeah, you guys. the difference between one and two is is pretty small it turns out it's one one person is yeah. the difference yeah it's still you both have very little experience and it's like i don't know he's been with one other girl but like that doesn't mean it was good doesn't mean he like liked it yeah you know and like all you have to do is i don't know like if if you're so concerned like i guess i guess the question is what is, what is the concern that like he's going to compare you to her or that he's going to think about her yeah or... why you should maybe do some 
introspection and try to understand your feelings about this and why it bothers you so much. Mm. What about it is the thing that bothers you? Does it make you feel insecure like you can't measure up to like the other girl or like you feel like you have less experience than him so you're like not as good at sex as he is like what is the what about it is bothering you i mean yeah because like almost all of those concerns are solvable like if you're concerned that like you're not going to be as good as her or that like you're not going to like satisfy him or whatever then like you can just like get better at stuff, you know what I mean? Like 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 watch some porn, get some ideas, like try like you you can you can easily remedy that by being like the best he's ever had. Um and like I mean, I don't know anything about the guy, but like I can almost guarantee that like he's not comparing you and her. Like th- this like people, that's like a concern a lot of people have. like on Reddit we read these posts a lot, right? Where it's like you know, a guy's concerned about his girlfriend's number of guys she's been with her vice versa right yeah and it's like oh i i feel like i'll never measure up and i i feel like you know like it, it's everyone especially guys i feel like but everyone's biggest fear is that like the person they're dating behind their back you know they're like oh well you know he's he's not as good as jesse was two years ago like his dick's smaller or whatever like people people create these like weird fantasies where it's like you know my boobs are smaller. My dick is smaller. I'm not as good. I'm not as whatever, whatever. But it's like, he's probably not thinking about that at all. You know, he's he's not like, it's not like you're having sex and then he's like, oh, you know, well, the, her, her legs aren't as good as my ex's. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like that's not happening. So like Kelsey said, I think you need to figure out what exactly you are insecure about. Like, like why does his number make you insecure? And yeah. chances are you can remedy that. I mean, she says... It- the the off balanceness makes her very depressed. Hmm. If we'd both slept with one other person or neither of us had, it would probably feel better. But it just feels like this off balance makes me really depressed. It, it's not. Um. It says he loves me. I know he feels almost guilty that there's this difference that bothers me so much. I hope that you're not like actively trying to make him feel bad about this because mm. it's not something that he can control. Yeah, like, he, he can't just, like, build a time machine and be like, all right, hold on, I'm going to go and undate this person. Yeah, and it's not fair to, like, um, guilt him or, like, shame him about this, which I'm not saying you're doing. But if you were, I don't think that that is fair to him. He didn't know that, like, he was going to get married to you. And that this would bother you so much. He was just, like, living his life. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a common thing that people do, but it is very silly to kind of fault someone for doing something in a previous relationship that they did before they even met you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I know, I know it's 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 easy to kind of fall into that, to be like, oh, you you had a threesome before me? What? You You did what? But it's kind of like, you know... Like, it's not like they knew that, oh, you know, five years from now, I'm going to meet this great girl. So I better not do that. I mean, I guess right. I guess someone could plan that way and be like, I'm going to save myself for the perfect girl, which is a perfectly valid way to live. But it's not really realistic for everyone to just like hold out for you, you know? Mm-hmm. I truly do understand and empathize with your feelings about this. But and I think you know this, that it is not healthy to dwell on this. And if you can't find a way to reconcile with it or at least put it in the back of your mind and not fixate on it so much, it's going to negatively impact your relationship, which I'm sure you don't want. Yeah, this 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 seems like one of those uh, problems or issues or whatever that could easily like like fester mm-hmm. and then and then sort of boil up and then like three years from now something something's going to happen that's going to trigger something and you're going to be upset about all kinds of everything and and you're going to be like oh you know i i wish we'd never gotten married because i wish i could have dated more i wish i could have slept with more people i wish i could have whatever so it's like this is something that yeah if you don't address it now either with just yourself or between the two of you then this seems like something that could lead to the cracking of the foundation of the relationship you know what i mean yeah i would try to get a hold on it before you guys get married, for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, now they said they're waiting till she's 21 to actually fully get married, right? Yes, she says next year, so she must be close-ish to turning 20. So. Right. So, yeah, this gives you time to, uh, yeah, to kind of really figure out wh- what exactly is the issue. And as long as you're going to marry this guy and be, like, totally faithful about it, then there's really no solution to your problem as far as, like, the actual physical problem itself. Yeah, you're not going to be able to, like, rectify it somehow. It's just something you have to come to terms with. So, like, either you break off the marriage and you date someone else for a while. But, again, if you're just dating someone just to get your number up, then that's probably not going to go well either. Um, Or, B, the more healthy... Well, the the better solution in the long run, I should say, is to figure out what your issue actually is. And there might be some way that you can remedy your insecure feeling. Um, like, I don't know, if there's <laughs> if there's something he's always wanted to do, then maybe you could do it for him. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, find, like, find something that he, like, you know, so you, you cannot be his first girl he's ever slept with, but you can be his first girl who's done a whole number of things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just use your imagination on that one. Yeah. I, I'm just saying it's like, you know, you're worried about... <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just saying it's like, you know, yeah, he's had sex with one other girl, but it was probably a lot of things he hasn't done yet, and then you can be the one who, like, does that. And so then it's like, you can... Uh, there's, there's ways you can remedy your insecurity rather than just getting the physical number up. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I hope you work it out and everything goes good. Yeah. You know, hope for the best, Ingrid. Yeah. Oh, so we have an update from last episode. Oh, oh, update time. Time for an update. So do you remember the email... Last episode is called General Questions Regarding Interactions, and it was about this girl's mom who was giving her, like, uh, antiquated dating Right, advice. right, about, we like, the, the, the girl shouldn't be the first one to make a move, and the girl shouldn't say she likes a guy, and that type of thing. Yes. Right? So she wrote in again, and she said, Hey, Alex and Kelsey, thank you so much for putting my entry on episode number 29 of the podcast. I found your advice extremely helpful. It feels good to know that girls can have more agency when dating than they did in the past and have it happily accepted by guys. Your advice will make things a lot less confusing going forward. Truly a big comfort. P.S. You were close on guessing the age range for my mom. You guessed around 50s, and she's 48 soon to be 49. You're definitely right when you said what worked back then may not work as well in today's time and culture. Thanks again. Keep up the great work. Best wishes and sending love from Georgia Anonymous. Look at us. Just solving problems, improving lives. Yeah. If if any of you guys have written in and we've answered your email on the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. And hopefully we helped in some some way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no well, that's, yeah, that's what, because, you know, when we record this, it's, you know, we're kind of just talking into the ether, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, we're in the, we're in this booth, and we're, like, recording in the podcast and talking to each other, and it's like, yeah, it, it'd be nice to get some kind of, like, oh, your advice helped me with this or that, because, I don't know, it's like, there's, like... Or, like, screw you guys, you ruined my life, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, yeah, if there is some kind of update or some kind of something like that, uh, we would love to have those kind of emails. Yeah. Because it makes it all worth it. You know? All right. So we'll make this the last Last one. email. We've been going for a while. Um, What's the title? It's called Cat Problems, in parentheses, not about lower body parts. <laughs> Talk about p- <laughs> Meow. Virginia? Uh, hey, Alex and Kelsey. You guys oh. are awesome. And I, what are you going to say? I was going to say hello when she said hello. Okay, fine. Hello, Alex and Kelsey. Hello. You guys are <laughs> you guys are awesome, and I love your podcast. I never thought I would actually need advice about this, but here I am. All right. There's this guy that I've been dating for a little over a month now. Mm. I really like him and would like to continue to have a relationship with him, but there is a problem. He hates cats. On our first couple of dates, he never mentioned that he hated cats, and I never mentioned that I had one. Hmm. I didn't know he hated cats until our fifth date when we were walking back to his car and we saw a stray cat. He looked at it and then swung his foot towards it to get it to back away. That's weird. Swing your foot right at his balls. (laughs) 
<laughs> he then started ranting about how disgusting cats were and how much he disliked them. What? I told him about my cat Wiggles that I've had for nine years. That's a very cute Wiggles name. is the cutest name for a cat ever. <laughs> he said that he wouldn't be coming to my apartment until I got rid of it. And I told him I wasn't going to get rid of the pet I love just because he thinks they're disgusting. What should I do? Date someone else. Uh, Problem solved. Break up. I've had Wiggles for so long and I'm not going to give her up, but I still want to continue to date this guy. Is this a sign he's a bad person? Yes. <laughs> should I break up with him before we both get too invested? Yes. Yeah, problem. Screw I mean, this guy. It's, it's, it's really cut and dry. I mean, like, not everyone has to, like, you know, love every animal or whatever, whatever. But, I mean, like... He pe- tried to freaking kick a cat. Yeah, yeah, no, I would say, like, people who, like, actively dislike animals, I, I can't comprehend that. I mean, I love animals a lot. Someone who actively dislikes cats so much that they, like, want to, like, kick one, that that's, like, a, a red flag on so many levels. If you have a cat whose name is Wiggles, and I assume they're extremely adorable... And like, send me a picture. Of yeah, yeah. Cat. So you should, you should, you should send a picture of your cat. You kidding me? <laughs> send me that stuff. He's a member of the family. Well, you know, I guess that that's the thing. Like people who like actively dislike animals to the point where they're okay with like trying to kick them or whatever. Like they don't see them as like sentient beings. They just see them as like a, a nuisance. Mm-hmm. So like, even if he. Even if you and this guy dated for a while and you end up moving in and he relents, he's like, okay, you can have a cat. But, like, he's not going to want to take care of it or do anything with it. No. He's going to see it as, like, not, like, a living thing. He's going to see it as, like, this, like, object that gets in his way. Um, So I'll tell you right now, there is no universe in which you and this guy are really going to work out. I know, like, you're really into him because you've been dating for a month. But I, I strongly, I think Kelsey agrees with me on this, I strongly recommend you date someone else. Yeah. I'm anyone who is like trying to abuse animals is not someone that you want to be dating. Like I I can't even kill a bug. <laughs> I take bugs and like put them outside. So like I can't even fathom like hating an animal this much. Yeah, I mean like like you know, not that you have to date like a cat lover, you know, but like yeah, someone who, like, dislikes cats that much and you have a cat. Like, how could this relationship possibly work out? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't get rid of it. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. No one should ever get rid of their pets. I mean, sometimes there are circumstances beyond your control, but, like, this is within your control. Right, yeah. I mean, that's Sure, yeah. I mean, yes. If the owner dies and the cat is astray, then, like, sure, yes. So someone else should take it. Yeah. But, I mean, like... Yeah, like, like, no, you shouldn't get, you should not get rid of a family member so that you can, like, date some guy for maybe a couple extra months or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, come on. Come on. No. No. Tie this guy to the tracks. Guys, send me pictures of your pets to devil's tango podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. I want to see them. All pets, cats, dogs, lizards, turtles, everything. Anything. Any pet bug. Just get- inundate me with pictures of your animals. That would be awesome. The, uh, obviously, I can't put them on the podcast, but, like, I want to look at them, so. Yeah. Just just send them in. Even if you don't have, like, a question or anything like that, just send them in. <laughs> Why not? And also, if you have any questions for us or about your love life that you would like us to answer, mm. send them to devilstanglepodcast at gmail.com. It's devilstanglepodcast at gmail.com. You might get on the show. You might get on the show. We might... We might change your life. Yeah. For better or for worse. Yeah. We might just ruin the whole thing. (laughs) No coming back. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.